Welcome to The Randy Show. I am the James Randy Educational Foundation's field coordinator, Brian Thompson. With me, as always, is James Randy. Good to be here. So how are you enjoying the last year anyone is ever going to be on Earth? <laughs> well, I'm, every, every day is to be treasured, of course, as, you, as we all know, because the Mayans knew about these things. Brian, they, they just doesn't dawn on anybody who's taken up on this thing that the Mayans just ran out of stone. They had a wheel, you know, and you can go around a wheel and then you come back to the beginning point again and you say, well, I guess that's enough. I, I don't have a 2013 calendar in the house. Does that mean that it doesn't exist or it won't exist or the end of the world comes at the end of 2012? Come on, friends, let's get real. Yeah, I think the Mayans were behind on calendar technology in a lot of ways. Like, their calendars were pretty cool looking, but I don't think the Mayans ever came up with the puppy a month calendar. No, 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 nothing like that. Uh, maybe maybe sacrifice of the month or something like that. Or <laughs> That's like not, no, I don't want to see that every time I roll over to a new month. Very true, very I true. I just want to see an adorable puppy. So, we're also going to be talking about psychics, or self-proclaimed psychics in particular. There's yes. one psychic named Nancy Marks, who last month was found guilty uh, of, of stealing uh, close to $300,000 from some of her clients. Uh, this was in Colorado. Apparently, she demanded money from them in order to draw out their bad energy. Oh, of course. And she took their credit card numbers in order to look for how many times the number six appeared in them. It didn't dawn on any of these victims to tell her the number of sixes that were in their, in their credit card. Of course, they had to send her the credit cards, no doubt, or at least give her the whole number. And she went off to Macy's and uh, Gimbel's and a few other places and spent all kinds of money, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So she, she went on trial last month, and it was a pretty speedy trial. I think it was a fairly open and shut case. So uh, I'm not really sure what her punishment is going to be right now. But she was certainly found guilty. And I wanted to talk to you about how you feel about psychics being prosecuted in general. I mean, in this particular case, she was stealing money from people. She wasn't just uh, providing a, a fake service for money. She was actually, like, stealing their cash and spending it at Target. Well, I find that's, that's a pity that it has to get to that point, Brian. That it has to get to a point where there's an actual theft of goods and or cash uh, from these people um, where they actually reach into their into their credit card. That, that's a sacred thing with Americans, of course, is the credit card and the credit rating. And uh, that would spoil the credit rating. Uh, that seems to make it a crime much more than just taking the money, actual currency that they put in the basket and leave with them or whatever the particular bajour is at that, at that moment of time, uh, the one that's most popular on Saturdays or whatever. It's incredible that it has to be that kind of a theft. But maybe that's the only kind of theft that some judges recognize, uh, that actually taking $100 bills from someone is, uh, ah, that's, that's, that's nasty, you shouldn't do that. But to actually take out their credit card and use it in Macy's, whoa, that's heavy. I don't see the difference at all. Theft is theft. There are some parts of the world that actually have outlawed psychic or street storefront psychics anyway. People who set up a shop and say they'll, you know, tell your future for a couple of bucks. Uh, but there aren't many places like that in the world. And why do you think that is? I, I think it's political correctness and uh, there's, there's sort of a, uh, uh, an indolence, a certain, there's an inertia uh, with uh, law enforcement authorities. They're a little afraid of this sort of thing because they don't know on what kind of ground they stand. I can tell them. Uh, they're standing in quicksand, and it's going away underneath their feet right now. But uh, they don't seem to want to listen to that. Uh, it is incredible that um, these people haven't come to justice before this, and particularly the Marx family. Now, whether that's their original name, I have no idea. But uh, there's Linda Marx, and there's Susie Marx. There's all kinds of Marxes all over the place. Uh, and the funny thing is, of course, that their term for a sucker is a Mark, M-A-R-K. Uh, it's strange that they would be using that name. But um, 
th this family is notorious all over Florida, certainly, uh, all through the South and in Georgia, uh, and all over the United States. Uh, they are notorious, and they've come into contact with the law, so to speak, uh, many times, and many of them have gone to prison, but uh, the amount of money they make far outweighs any uh, prison penalty. They just have to sit there for a couple of years and wait till the time goes by, and then they've still got the money. How many, how many of these families do you think exist all over the world that have just, this is the family trade, is setting up a, a psychic storefront, and, and they've been doing it for generations and generations? Well, there is a gypsy culture, make no mistake about that. Um, the, the gypsies call their maneuvers, uh, these various swindles that they carry out, they call them bajours. Uh, we've had several different uh, guesses at uh, where that name may have come from, but um, they use it among themselves, but certainly not with their victims, and there are all kinds of them. Everything from uh, repaving your driveway with uh, motor oil, <laughs> which is a very popular one, they have a huge truck with with a sign on the side of it, and they stop by. Oh, we, we have some of this uh, coating for the driveway uh, left over here, and we can give you a really good buy on it. That's a gypsy scam, too. Uh, they're all over the world in different cultures, and their, their basic philosophy is that the marks are out there, and uh, we, the marks, <laughs> are going to go after them. And we're going to get their money and we'll leave them and uh, maybe they'll get smart and maybe they won't. If they won't, we'll come back and do it again. Yeah, I know the term gypsy has become kind of slightly politically incorrect, at least in Europe, but not so much in the States. Uh, people say it all the time in the States. Um, but in Europe, I think it's it's sort of been used. There are certain governments that uh, have, have tried to use, I think, gypsies as... Uh, scapegoats to, you know, pass anti-immigrant yeah. legislation and stuff like okay. that. Uh, um, but, but you're right, there is, there is this culture of, of, you know, generations and generations, these families that, that pull off grifts, I guess, if mm -hmm. you want to yep. use another word for it. Yep. My favorite one, when I was in Rome, I was told to watch out for this particular scam, which was uh, that an old lady would be carrying a baby and, uh, and, and she would trip and the baby okay. would come flying out of her arms, and uh, and when someone would would sort of dive in to catch the baby, a bunch of other people would swarm and just steal everything out of this good Samaritan's pockets. Yeah, which I thought was a great trick because <laughs> really the only defense against this is that whenever you see a baby flying through the air, just you forget, just <laughs> throw up your hands, let the, let the baby bounce and go on your happy way. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's no good way to inoculate yourself against that scam. No, no, I, I think not. Uh, the bajour is out there, and you've got to be very careful of it. I don't know whether I told you on one of these interviews the story of me um, uh, in uh, in Spain. We were in Barcelona. Did I tell you the story about that? I don't think so. Well, uh, I'll try it now, and you'll edit it out if uh, it's redundant. Okay. Sure. Pause for was, edit. Yeah, I was visiting my friend uh, Sonny Fontana. Uh, a magician friend from many years ago in Barcelona. That's the way they say it, though I'll say it the same way. Uh, as in the, the, the general square there, and we were sitting around having endless cups of coffee and getting a buzz on. And um, <clears throat> I, I noticed that they were doing the three-card Monty uh, business, the business of three cards face down, which one is the queen, you have to point it out. And uh, they had a couple of people, uh, taller guys, standing there looking around to make sure that there were no interruptions coming because this is strictly against the law to work the tourist trade like this in Barcelona. Uh, other cities in Spain, I can't speak for it, but I, I know that it is there. And uh, every now and then, uh, while I was watching them, and uh, Sonny was, uh, was telling me some of the, um, the cute gimmicks that they were using, a uh, very interesting story and very interesting uh, uh, development of, of their culture was given to me in, in those few minutes. And um, then I heard a, Hum! and I thought, what was that? It's very, very loud and very obvious. And it was from one of the two gentlemen, this uh, gentleman, ho, 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 uh, who was looking out for the cops. And indeed, a police car started to cruise by. And the gypsy just folded up the whole operation, uh, the tip, as they call it, the just folded the whole thing up and looked around 
at the skies and the swallows going by and whatnot. And uh, the cop car passed. There was a, a nod of assent, and they they went right back into it again. And so I <laughs> I did something rather daring, and Sonny <laughs> told me afterwards that he was. Uh, what's the expression? Yeah, scared shitless is the expression. It, 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 it says something better in Spanish, I'm told. In any case, um, I had been doing something which was rather risky. Uh, and so uh, by, by observing this thing and seeing what the, the gimmick was, and I decided to move further into the fray. So I got a little closer into the operation. And uh, while looking in another direction, I did a huh! sort of a thing like this, and everybody dove for cover, and they covered up the gimmick, <laughs> and the, uh, there was no police car coming by, and they're looking around for it, wondering, where, where are the cops, you know? And that was me, you see. And they didn't know that, but I made them <laughs> clear the whole area, <laughs> and then they went back to business when they saw no police car, and I did it a couple of times, and then Sonny came to me and advised me that uh, discretion was the better part of any kind of dollar that I wanted to display, and he took me out of the square. Uh, perhaps I might not have lasted another. <laughs> well, if you want to ask any more questions of Randy, I think next time we're gonna we're gonna answer some viewer mail. If you don't mind, if you want to ask any questions about possible uh, practical jokes or uh, or world travels that Randy has had in the course of his life, you can uh, send them to me. I am Brian at Randy.org, B-R-I-A-N at Randy.org, and just put Randy's show somewhere in the subject line. And uh, I guess we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, Randy. Yes, please do. But I just want to add one thing before we go, Brian. Uh, this, uh, this woman, Marks, uh, who has been convicted already, I, I want to follow that through and find out whether she actually does go to prison, because they have huge amounts of money to invest in lawyers. And I'm, I'm very surprised to find out they got this far that it actually went to trial because usually they, they bring in 30 or 40 lawyers and they sit around the room and they offer all kinds of objections. And usually the thing blows over simply because it's too involved and too expensive for the local authorities to follow through on. They just can't afford to do it. And when justice is something that can't be afforded, you're in serious trouble. The Randy Show is a production of the James Randy Educational Foundation. To learn more about how we promote science and critical thinking, go to randy.org.